So before we move into the software defined network, let's look into some of the history on how the SDN origin. SDN was developed by Clean State Program at Stanford University. You can just Google it uh, to look for the SDN origin. I think there are a long article on that on the Wikipedia. As an innovative new network architecture, the core of SDN is to separate the control plane from the data plane. Now, I want you to take note here. This is very important. The control plane and the data plane is in one device right now. So now they want to decouple it. So control plane is the controller. So we have our SDN application and the controller. So why you want to do that? Because you can implement centralized control of the network control plane and provide good support for network application innovation. So that's the first initiative and that's the one reason why we want to have this SDN because we want to centralize the control. SDN has three characteristics in initial phase. Forward control separation. So as I mentioned, data and control plane is separate. Centralized control, this is where we are using our SCN application that control the controller and open programmable interfaces, which is important. If you remember my previous slide that I mentioned slow in deployment, uh, the reason is because that on all the device, we are using configuration. Now we are we are moving to programmability. All right, so from program, we can actually use this SDN application to send this information to OpenFlow controller and OpenFlow controller using the protocol called OpenFlow to send to all these OpenFlow switches. Now then you can see that these are the OpenFlow devices, which means that the traditional device currently that you are using, which is not supporting OpenFlow, may be changed. All right, so in future, once this old equipment has expired their support, I believe that many of the enterprise will start to use this new device where they can somehow support this SDN standard. So in this diagram, you can see that this is my traditional uh, routers who have control plane, folding plane, and also have the uh, management plane. They want to evolve to become the open flow standard. We have the SDN application. This is depend on the vendor. So different vendor will have different SDN application. And they also have the controller. This is a piece of device where they can just use a generic service. It can be ARM or it can be x86 that just install the SDN application running OpenFlow protocol to maintain all the device. So here we have achieved a separation of a folding plane and a control plane. So OpenFlow switch have only the data plane, so they do not have the control. So you cannot just use this switch and expect it able to do the switching or the routing. You still need the brain and the brain will be the controller. So that is the motivation and the origin of SDN. Okay, so let's look into basic concept of OpenFlow. OpenFlow is an SBI. So what is an SBI? SBI stands for Southbound Interface Protocol. So Southbound Interface means that it's actually going uh, downward. Okay, Southbound Interface. So uh, going outward, we call it as a northbound interface. So OpenFlow is a southbound interface protocol between a controller and a switch. It defines three types of messages. The three types are controller to switch, asynchronous, and a symmetric. Each message contains a more subtype. So let's look into the basic concept of OpenFlow. There are three types, controller to the switch. This message is sent by controllers. It is used to manage and query the switch information. The content includes the feature that you are going to deploy into the switch, the packet out information, the configuration, the read state, as well as the modified information. Then we also have asynchronous traffic. This message is initiated by the switch. When the status of the switch changes, the switch sends this information or message to notify the controller of the status change, uh, which include packet in, flow, expired, port status. These are some of this information that the asynchronous message are sent from the switch to the controller. And lastly, we have symmetric message. This message can be initiated by either switch or the controller. The message include the hello message, the echo message, or the error messages. So these are the three main type of the open flow. Let's look into more detail on the open flow now. So let's look into the open flow table overview. Open flow switches forward packet based on the flow table. Each flow entry include the match field, which in this case, this is the part here, the priority, 
the counter, the instruction, the timeout, the cookie, and the flag. So we are referring to uh, this information. The mesh field and instruction are the key field for the packet forwarding. You notice over here the mesh field include this sub of information. Example, in the mesh field, we are going to mesh the ingress port of port 3, the MAC address of the source MAC address 1, destination Ethernet MAC address, the Ethernet type, the VLAN ID, the priority, the IP source, IP destination, the port and the destination. So you can see that it's very similar to what we have on our layer 2 and the layer 3 uh, packet header. So the mesh field is a field against which packet is meshed and can be customized. The instruction field. So this is the instruction field. So once you mesh, what are the action that you want to perform? So the instruction field indicate the open flow processing when packet match a flow entry. So these are the basic building block for the flow table. So now let's look into the comparison between the forwarding mode between a typical routing protocol, which consists of the dynamic routing protocol. Uh, in this case, we are using example of a protocol such as OSPF versus the open flow packet forwarding. So in this diagram, we have two switches, switch number one and switch number two. Now switch number one have adjacency with switch number two. So now they have this destination network for me to go to 10 slash 30 using OSPF. Next hop is 1112, which in this case is the next hop interface and the interface outbound is gig 001. So in a typical case, network device query routing table to guide the traffic forwarding. Entry in a routing table are calculated by running a routing protocol between the network devices. The length of the routing table is fixed. Network devices forward packet based on the longest mesh rules. A network device has only one routing table. So this is something that we know very well. Currently, this is what we are doing, routing table. Now next, this is the new way of doing things using open flow. So the same thing here, we have two switches. We have switch number one and switch number two, which is running open flow. And we also have the open flow controller, remember, when we use the SDN, we need to have a controller. So inside the controller, they are going to send this open flow traffic, which form the table that I mentioned earlier on. So they have a series of a table and this table have this information. So table zero, table one, table two, they are going to check in order. They have this mesh field, the priority, the counter instruction, timeout and cookie I mentioned earlier on. So open flow is a network protocol. Switches run open flow, forward traffic based on the flow table. Flow table are calculated by open flow controller are then delivered to the switch. A flow table has variable length and define various matching and folding rules. The network device has multiple flow table. Now what you can see here, the routing that's performed on this switch, we have only one routing table. Whereas if you are using SDN running open flow, we can have multiple table. So that's the first difference. Second here is the control is not done on the switch, but the control is done on the controller. So we have a centralized control. This is where I mentioned SDN decouple the data plane and the control plane. And thirdly, we can program in such a way we do not need to follow the longest match. We can have a flow to define how the match based on our need. So you can see that this is where the programmability come in. So it gives you a lot of flexibility, yet you still have the overall topology inside the controller. So that is the difference between a traditional routing table versus a flow table. So what are the essential requirements of SDN? First, the essence of SDN is to make network more open, flexible, and simple. These are the three reason why we want to run on SDN. It built a centralized brain for network and implement fast service deployment, traffic optimization, and network service openness through the centralized control in a global view. So just now I already show you we have a centralized control and these traffic are guided not through the routing table, but through the flow table. So what are the advantage? The first advantage is SDN provides centralized management Hence, it simplifies network management and operation and management. Second, it shields the technical differences 
simplify network configuration and reduce O&M costs. All the vendors are following a standard. We can have one controller that ideally will able to manage all the SDN switches. Third, SDN benefit are offer automatic optimization and hence improve the network utilization. Fourth, SDN deploy service rapidly, shortening the service rollout time because everything is programmable. It can be automated. And because you are using a single controller, the controller can deliver this setting very fast. Lastly, it built an open network supporting open and programmable third-party application so you are not locked down into certain vendor ideally now we are still at the very infancy of this uh, sdn even though sdn has been in the uh, market for about a decade already so with sdn it will transform our network architecture so let's look into the sdn network architecture consists of orchestration application layer which is this part here controller layer which is the middle part and the device layer which is the physical switch so these are the three layer different layer are connected through open interfaces from the perspective of the controller layer sbi oriented to the device layer okay so we are going downward so here we have the sbi southbound interface and the nbi oriented to the orchestration here we have the knock path interface so the knock path interface is to the application layer uh, distinguish open flow is a SBI protocol so this slide tell you that we have two different interfaces either is southbound toward to the switch or northbound toward to the application or orchestration layer all right so you are clear about this NBI and SBI now let's look into Huawei SDN specifically now. Huawei SDN network architecture support various SBI and NBI. Include OpenFlow, OVSDB, NetConf, PSAP, RESTful, SNMP, BGP, JSON RPC, and REST config interfaces. So you notice that Huawei use a lot of these different protocol. So to give you some ideas, Huawei have this software which is the iMaster NCE. This is the controller. The controller can interface to the southbound using this particular programming, all right? PSAF, NetConf, and all the, all the programming interfaces that I mentioned. So these are the SBI interfaces that Huawei can support. And on the northbound plane, we have RESTful, SNMP, MTOSI, Cobra, Kafka, SFTP, and REST config. This slide gives you an overview about what is the SBI interfaces and what is the NBI interfaces. So you can see that these are all the programming interfaces. And at the bottom over here, you can see that these are the devices that we mentioned, the access point, the switches, the customer premises, equipment, routers, the security. gateway and the virtual network function device that I'm going to cover later part. So here we look into Huawei SDN solution integrating management control and analysis to build an intent driven network right at the bottom we have over network layers so these are all the equipment that we have while we have SDN WAN solution so we have the WAN and data center interconnection connecting to the data center fabric so connecting both the branches and the headquarters together into the data center so for us to manage all these devices, this is where we have the iMaster NCE. So in the iMaster NCE, they have three parts. They are the manager part, the controller part, and the analyzer part the manager is for you to manage all the devices the controller is 
for the authentication and the analysis is where the AI and the big data come in to give you the benefit of simplify your troubleshooting and on the not bound we have the cloud platform the self-help portal mobile apps and third-party application if we build entirely ecosystem which contain of the control analysis and the manager we have a intent driven network